I'm going to start this one out. I just have a cube in the center. Pointing my camera over here. And on this cube, I'm just going to scale it down on the x-axis a little bit. And scale it up on the y just to make it a little bit more wall-like. And then now that we have this, I'm just going to press tab U. And then smart UV project and OK. Just so we have our UV unwrap here. Then if we go into our shading tab, we have our uh, cube selected here. I'm just going to focus on it from a better perspective. Then if I go to the rendered preview in here, I'm going to switch my rendered mode or the lighting here to uncheck scene world. I'm going to check this forest one. Now I'm just going to set the rotation to something like a zero. Just basic stuff there. Then over here, I'll make sure I'm going to go to object mode. I'm going to press new. Sweet. And now we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and name this like a sizzling brick or something. You can name it whatever you want. Then on the renderer, I'm just going to pull this tab over. I'm going to be using the cycles and you'll want to use experimental if you want to get the displacement. If you are using Eevee, then at the end when we add displacement, you don't have to do that. But to make it look a little bit more realistic, cycles and experimental is uh, really good for that. So yeah, anyways, let's get started. So we're going to shift A and search for a brick texture here, like so. Then with this selected, we're going to press Control T. And if you don't have that shortcut already, go over to Edit Preferences and go to Add-ons and search up the Node Wrangler add-on and then check this box. Then when you select this, you can press Control T then and you'll get this texture coordinate and mapping. Then we'll Control Shift and left click this brick texture. And as you can see here, when we're using generated coordinates, it's looking like crap. And if we plug in object coordinates, it's also looking like crap. So what we want to do is we want to plug in UV coordinates here, and that'll give us this nice thing right here. Obviously, it's still a little bit mismatched, but that is all right. We can, we'll, we'll fix that in a little bit. Anyways, on these colors here, we're going to want to take this color one. Well, actually, let's go ahead and fix the UV unwrap before we get started. So we go to UV editing here. Currently, it says this is UV unwrap, which is not realistic. And the reason that our unwrap didn't work the first time is because we didn't apply the rotation and the scale. So we need to hit Control A and apply the rotation and scale. Then press Tab, press A over here, U, Smart UV Project, OK. And then we'll get the uh, proper sides like this. Now that we have that, we can go back to our shading. Or we actually, we can just go to Rendered Preview, like this. And we can see that this stuff isn't scaled properly, so we're going to press Tab. We can hit 3 to go into Face Select, and then 3 to go to Face Select over here. We'll select this face and it's rotated sideways so that we can select it over here. Press R, 90 degrees. Nice. And then over here, on the other side, it's going to be the exact same thing. I'm actually going to go over here. I'm going to uncheck Scene World just so that we don't have that in the background. Then once again, I'll select this guy, R, 90, just like this. Sweet. And then same on the top here. This one is also rotated the wrong way, R90, once we select this guy, just like that. As you can see, they're slightly off center, so we can just grab these over here on, let's say, the X. And then as you can see, we can shuffle it slightly and until we get the mortar lining up with everything, just like this. Now, obviously, this isn't ideal, but it is what you'll have to do if you want the UV unwrap to be perfect, unless you have your seams marked and everything and you unwrap, and your unwrap is just really good off the bat. But yeah, you will have to make some minor adjustments to things. Unfortunately, because the UV unwraps are not perfect. So then we'll grab this guy, move him on the Y a little bit. Let's move him up, or actually down. Make sure he's lined up over here. Just like this. Sweet. That's uh, a little bit too low. Grab Y. Okay, cool. It's pretty lined up. Now we're good to go. I'll head back over to shading. Nice. So I'm just going to go down here. Make sure we're in object mode again. So just press tab. If we select and it turns that, that color, then we'll go back to object mode. So now on this brick texture, we're going to want to change the brick width and stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this brick width a 1. And I'm going to change the row height to a 0.5 like this, just so that we get some blockier bricks. Sweet. Then for the mortar size, I, want, I don't want that to be constant, so I'm going to randomize that in a certain way. So I'll press Shift-A, I'm going to search for a noise texture. And then I'm going to plug this vector into the noise texture. Then I'm going to press Shift-A and search for a map range node afterwards. Take this factor into the value of the map range, Control-Shift-Left-Click to preview. 
on this noise texture, I'm going to change the scale up to a 15, the detail to a 16, and the roughness to a 0.65. That's going to give us a more blurred effect or a detailed effect. Then this map range, I'm going to bring in the blacks a bit. So I'm going to bring the black to a 0.3. The from minimum top value here. Then it's from max, I'm going to bring all the way down to a 0.05. So that's going to make it almost entirely black. And what we do is when we control shift left click this brick texture, if we take this result into the mortar size, it's going to give us random mortar size and give us some detail in the mortar to give us some wear on the bricks or artificial wear. And that's a really cool thing we can do there. Then with this color one, I'm going to take this and bring it all the way to a white. And then the color two, make it all the way to a black. So that we get a full range of zero to ones there. Then with this, we're just going to take our factor from this guy and bring it into an invert node. So if I shift A and search for the invert node, currently if we control to look like this one more time, we have the white is the mortar and the black is not. And this is gonna factor into the bump. And in bump language, white equals higher up and black equals lower down. And the height map and bump map stuff. So we're gonna plug this color or the factor into our color and it's gonna invert the colors just like that. I'm also going to grab this invert node, move him down here. Then I'll grab the principal shader and move them farther this way because we're going to need some space later. So then I can just press Shift A and search for our bump node here. And then take this invert into our height, just like this. Then this normal into the normal. So now if we control Shift and left click the shader, we can see that we have some nice height popping out here. And this is without any displacement, so it, the material will also look pretty much exactly like this if you're using Eevee. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, this next step. We're going to be working on giving the brick some more of a rockiness feel to it. So I'm going to press Shift A. I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture. And then I'm going to take our vector into the Voronoi texture just like this. Then I'll control shift left click to preview him. I'm going to bring his scale all the way up to a 200. Just like this. And then I'm going to take this Euclidean value. I'm going to switch it to Minkowski to give us some different random effects. And I'm going to take the exponent and bring it all the way up to a 20. And this is going to give us some super cool effects with the stars and stuff, just like that. And then this is going to be factoring into some bump for our mortar. So we're going to hit Shift A. I'll search for a mix RGB node here, just like this. I'm going to take our distance into color two. And then if we take our factor into here, if I control shift left click this guy, you can see that it's only affecting the mortar. But I want to make this color one a black, just so we have it like that. And we want it to be really subtle, so when we plug it into the bump, I'm going to hit Shift-A, search for a bump node again. Plug that in between the other ones. Take this color into the height, and I'm going to switch the strength all the way down to a 0.2. Or actually, let's bring it down to a 0.1. Just see what that's looking like. I'll control shift left click this guy. Now we can see that there's some slight bump happening here, which is what we want. Nice. Now that we've made the mortar a little bit more rocky and organic, we're going to do the same thing with the actual bricks. So I'm gonna press Shift A, search for a noise texture like this. I'm gonna take this vector into here, then I'll Control Shift and left click to preview it, zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna take this scale and bring it up to a 15, and the detail to a 16 like this. Then I'm gonna add two map range nodes, so Shift A, search, type range, add this guy afterwards, and then factor to value, control shift D to duplicate him, and now we've got two. This is going to be adjusting our, one of these is gonna be adjusting the bump for the rock, and the other is gonna be adjusting where we, cause we're gonna actually also add another Voronoi texture, and it's gonna be adjusting where we want some sort of more pointiness in the rocks to add some more diversity. So on this top map range, I'm gonna bring the front minimum up to a 0.3, and then the front max down to a 0.7, just like that. Then the second one, I'll control shift and left click them to preview. I'm going to bring this all the way up to a 0.5 on the front minimum, and then from max down to a 0.6, just like this. Obviously, we can adjust these values later on, but for now, I'll show you what I have. Then we'll press shift A. I'm going to search for a mix RGB node, place them right here. And I'm going to take this color into the factor, and then I'll take this one into color one. So we control shift and left click. We can see that we are affecting some things, but not everything with that. If I change it to a black, you can see it much more clearly. What is being affected, or if I switch it to a red even, what's being affected and what's not. So then I'm going to press Shift-A and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture. This is going to be our chips and stuff to make it more organic. This vector is going to come into here. 
Then we're going to switch this to distance to edge. And from the F1, just like this, to the scale, I'm going to bring up to all the way to a 250. But currently, for previewing him, it's way big like this. I bring him up to 250, and they get a lot smaller. So now if I preview this and plug him into the red, color 2, we can see now we have some cool chip things going on here. Now we're going to plug that into affecting our brick only. So I'll press Shift-A. I'm going to search for a mixed RGB node, just like this. Take this color, bring it into color 1, because we're going to be using this guy as our factor. So bring this into the factor, Control shift and left click. So now we can see that we're not affecting the mortar at all. And then change this color all the way to a black, just like this. Sweet. So now I'm going to duplicate this bump node. So I'll just press Shift-D, put him in afterwards, plug this color into our height. Then I'm going to change the strength to a 0.2. So now we can control shift and left click our shader here. And it's bringing in our new bump data. And it's starting to look pretty organic. Nice. So now that we have all of our bump, we're going to be factoring in our colors and things like that. So I'm just going to take all of this right here, other than the bump nodes, grab it, and I'll move it down here just so that thing stays a little more organized. Then I can hold shift and right click, drag over these guys just to give us some more organization like this. And then the same thing with this. I'm just going to drag them up here so everything's a little more clear. And just drag these guys so it's a little bit more obvious where things are coming from. Nice. So then I'm going to come all the way up here, start working on the color, shift A, search for a noise texture. Place them here. Take this vector into the noise texture. Oop, not the scale. Then I'll press shift and right click just to give us this guy to use in the future. Then I'll control shift and left click on this noise texture to preview him. Bring the scale up to a 30, the detail to a 10, and the roughness I'm going to put all the way up to a 0.85. Then I'll press shift day, search for a map range node right after to bring up the contrast a little bit. From minimum I'm going to put to a 0.3, from max to a 0.7, you know the drill. Then I'm going to add our two mix nodes, one for our rock brick color and the other one for our in-between sort of sizzle, brightness, lava, whatever color. Or you can even make it blues if you wanted to. So I'll press Shift A, I'm gonna add a mix RGB here. This is gonna be used as the factor for both of the mix RGBs. So now that I have this guy, I'm gonna press Control Shift D and add a second one. So now Control Shift and left click this top guy to preview him. And then this color one, I'll go ahead and give you a hex value. I'm gonna be using a 2E3134. Again, that is a 2E3184, just like that. Oh. 134 actually, not 1E4. That's a mistake. There we go. That's much more rocky. Then the second value, I'm going to be using a 27252C. Again, that is a 27252C, just like that. So now we've got our rock brick color. Then I'll preview this next guy. This is going to be our sort of lava in between color. And we're going to start off with super dark values just in case you don't want it to be too glowy. And then we're going to have a hue saturation nodes afterwards where you can brighten things up and make it a little bit more vibrant. And I'll be showing you how to do that, of course. Anyways, so this first one is going to be a 3F371F. Again, that is a 3F371F, just like that. As you can see, it's hinted towards yellow, but we're not saturating it or upping it to the whites too much. And the second color is going to be a 3F2A1F. Again, that is a 3F2A1F, just like this. Sweet. And then, like I said, we're going to hit Shift-A, search for a hue saturation node. Take this color into here. I'm going to duplicate this guy. Afterwards, place him here. And I'll actually go ahead and make some adjustments to this one. So I'm going to change the saturation down to a 0.4. Just so, because right now, this hue saturation is going to make everything more like a mortar so that you can always turn off the brightness and animate that. So I'm going to take the value also on this one and bring it down to a 0.4. So this is going to make it more like a mortar if we, when we factor it into our stuff. So now I'm going to press Shift A, search for a mix RGB, like so. Take this color into color one and this color oops go into color one go on this color into color two and then for the factor we're bringing up our brick texture factor again just like this oops come here give me the factor scroll up here into the factor so if we control shift and left click this guy we can see that we are affecting our mortar and our brick respectively nice so now we can go ahead and take this guy and plug him into the base color because this isn't going to be affecting the emission at all so we can always turn the emission all the way down and we still have a somewhat decent, a pretty decent looking material. So if you don't want to work with emission at all and you want to keep it on this, go ahead, feel free. Obviously I'm going to be working with some displacement in a little bit, but yeah.
Ooh, something we can also do is go with the scale on this brick and change it to a four. Or maybe not a four, maybe we can change it to something a little bit different. If we, or actually, if maybe a four and a half would be better. Yeah, I'm gonna switch it to a four and a half just so that we have the bricks lining up properly with the bottom and top because when we're on the even numbers like a four, there's like half a brick up there. If we're on a five, there's like half a brick there still. So I'm gonna bring this scale to a four and a half just because we want an uh, even amount of bricks from to bottom to top, so it's not a little bit off. And our UV map, since we adjusted earlier, should still be flowing nicely. Anyways, sorry about that. I should have mentioned it earlier, but I forgot. So now we're just gonna go ahead and add our emission stuff, which should be pretty simple. So I'm gonna duplicate this hue saturation node. I'm gonna press Shift D and move them down here. Take this color into the color. Then I'll press Control Shift and left click on him. So we have this, nice. So I'm gonna change this guy's saturation all the way up to a 20. I'm gonna saturate everything super well, and then this value I'll bring up to like a one, just like this. Cool. And if we wanna bring up the value even more, we can bring it up to like a five, and that'll give us some more yellows and stuff, but I'll leave it at a one just for now. So now I'm gonna press Shift A. I'm gonna search for a mix RGB node, because we need to tell it not to be affecting the whole thing, because if we go ahead and control shift left click this guy, if we plug this guy into our emission color, it's gonna do that, and we don't want that. So we're gonna plug the hue saturation into our color two of this guy. So now if we control shift and left click, I'll change color one to a black. And then for the factor, currently, if I go ahead and plug in our brick texture again, just like this, we see that we are affecting everything properly. But now we sort of want the brick to be affected or be able to affect the brick with the slider. So obviously I'll control shift left click this guy. If we bring this into the color now, we can see that it's only affecting our mortar. If we bring up the strength to like a five, we can see that it's glowing nicely. We can bring up the value a little bit here to make it a little more cartoony if we want, or we can bring it back down. Well, we have that going, but we want to add a little bit of detail in both the mortar and the brick so that it's not so solid and smooth and clean to make it more natural. And to do that, we just need another noise texture. So I'm just gonna take our colors that we already have up here, bring them up here slightly, and I'll press Shift A, search up a noise texture. Oops. Just like this, take this guy into the vector, control shift left click to preview. I'm gonna change his scale up to a 50, not a 500, just a 50. And the detail up to a 16, and the roughness to a 0.8. This is gonna make everything nice and detailed. So I'll press shift A and add two map ranges again, one right after here, then control shift D, add another one. One's gonna be for the mortar, one will be for the brick, just like we did here. So then, with this top map range, I'll control shift left click to preview. I'm going to bring the from minimum up to a 0.6. So the blacks are going to be up a lot. This is going to be affecting the brick. And that's all I'm going to change there. Then I'm just going to control shift left click this guy. I'm going to bring the from minimum up to a 0.5. Just like this. So it's pretty 50 50. It, yeah. Anyways. Now I can go ahead and plug these values in after I hit shift A and add some math nodes. Because we, don't, we want these to be solid colors on the white. So I'm going to take this map range into the value here, change this function to greater than, and then threshold to a point zero 0.01. So what that's doing is if you control shift and left click to preview, it's changing everything to appear whites. Nice. We can also bring this up to like a point zero 0.05 or whatever, or even lower like a point zero zero 0.001, things like that. But I'm going to leave it a point zero 0.01 for now. So then I'm going to sh shift D on this guy and then cut that off if you accidentally control shift D. Take this color into here. And now we have our whites and our blacks, just like that. Then we're going to mix these together. So I'll hit Shift A, search for a mixed RGB just like this. Take this value into color 1 and this value into color 2. Then for the factor on him, we need to discern what's what. So if we take the brick texture again, bring it into the factor, we now have our mortar being affected less and, I mean more, and then our brick being affected differently. So then we can just simply take that guy and bring it into here. So currently we have this, we pick this into color one. We now have this. And actually color one is not what we need to be coming into here. We need to be coming into the factor. So if we control shift and left click this guy, we can now see that everything is blurring a lot better. Nice. Now if we control shift and left click this guy, we can see that we have some orange kind of bleeding through the brick here. And then we have some brick here where the mortar is more natural. And so it's just a lot more organic looking now. So now that we've done that, if I go down here and up the emission strength to maybe like a 10, we can see that it starts glowing a lot more freely. And for the sake of things, I'll go ahead and give you the exact emission strength that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using a 50 here. 
gonna make everything look super glowy. And as always, you can switch the hue on everything, to change the colors, like you can bring this to like a 0.1, you'll get yourself some purples, or bring it up to like a 0.6, maybe some greens, or maybe you have to go a little bit higher, like a 0.65, yeah. And then you get your greens and stuff. Obviously you can change the color to whatever you want, but 0.5 is your default colors. Obviously you can change with the hues, the saturation and stuff here, and stuff like that. You can change the color of your rocks up here. Then the roughness, I'm just gonna bring that all the way up to like a 0.6, so that the rock is pretty rough. So now we have the base material done. All we have to do is factor into the displacement if you wanna be doing that. And to do that, we're gonna change some options here. So if you press N, you open up this side panel here. If you don't have an N key working on your keyboard, you can press this little drop right here. Then if you go to options, it'll give you the option for this material. Go to displacement and switch to displacement and bump. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to use displacement. But you'll only have that option if you're using the cycles renderer. So obviously use a cycles renderer and use experimental just like that. So now we'll hit shift A, search for a displacement node. Like so. So then on this guy, we're gonna change the scale down to a 0.1 because we don't want it to be too much. Then the value that we're gonna plug into him is going to be a combination of our brick height, our invert here, and then our rocks and mortar, just like respectively so. I'm gonna search for a map node so that we can adjust these values later. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into our height here. Currently, I'm gonna switch this to a subtract and we'll leave that there for now. Then I'll hit Shift A, search for our mix RGB, just like this. I'm gonna change him to add to one. Then I'll take his color into this value. Then I'll go ahead and check clamp on this subtract node. Then the stuff I'm factoring into here is I'm taking this invert node, bringing him into color one. So if we preview this guy, we have this. Then for color two, we're gonna be factoring in this mix node here, the one with uh, anything affecting the mortar, just the stone brick. So take this into here. So now if we preview him, it looks pretty pure white. And then if we go to the subtract node, we're gonna switch this value to a 1.3, just so that we can see the contrast a lot better. Nice. Maybe 1.3 is a little much. We can subtract this, obviously. Maybe bring it down to like 0.9, maybe a one flat, so we have those nice spots. Then if we take our displacement and plug him in here, we might get a little bit of lag or not, because guess what? We haven't given ourselves a subsurf modifier yet, so it can't really do much. Obviously, without the displacement, the material's already looking good. But yeah, I'm gonna plug this in. Whoops, not RGB to black and white. Plug this guy in. Then with this selected, if I go over here, I'm gonna go back to the solid mode just so that this doesn't lag while I add the subsurf. Go to modifiers, go to subdivision surface modifier on add modifiers. I'm gonna switch this mode to simple and check adaptive subdivision. Drag this guy over here. And then I'm going to go to rendered preview. So now we have our mesh actually getting displaced. If we bring this up to like a 0.5, you can see that it ends up being really way too strong, which is not what we want. So I have it down as a 0.1. So as you can, if we go to the side view here, you can see that it's displacing the mesh slightly. If we unclamp this value, and then say we put zero on the subtraction, we can see that displacement happening much clearer, much more clearly. But I like to clamp this and leave it at like a 1.3, something like that. Obviously, in the render preview, it will displace more and things like that. But anyways, this is the finished product. Um, once again, you can go over the displacement, you can change the mid-level, things like that. Um, you can adjust your colors really easily, like say you want this to be a blue, make this like, just like that. I uh, just change the hue to a one, and then now we've got light blue. You can adjust the amount of effect you want to have here. So if I subtract so these guys on here, doom, we can leave this at a one. We can change the amount of stuff we're affecting on the mortar. I'll bring it back up to a 0.5. And if we want to do that, we can affect the stone brick way too much. We can affect it way less, affect it none, things like that. Make it find somewhere in between, like a 0.65 maybe. We can also switch the scale of this. So let's bring this back to a 0.6. If we want to have this affect bigger spots, we can switch this to like a 5 or 50 or whatever. Maybe like a 200 if you want it to be super tiny. And then stuff like that. But yeah, that is a finished material. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'm going to go switch this back to the lava, just like that. But yeah, 
Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this material and can use it in your renders and find it quite satisfying to look at. Anyways, I will see y'all guys in the next one. Oof, that felt long.